What's up, Brian Tong here with your Googleicious, and Google I.O. is all wrapped up, but there's plenty of other cool things that came out from the sessions after the keynote. Now, some of the coolest stuff came out of Google's advanced technologies and product session, known more commonly as Google ATAP. Google and Levi Strauss showed off their latest collaboration with Project Jacquard, a commuter smart jacket that will be in beta this fall with a release plan for next spring. Now there's a gesture to tap or swipe and you'll be able to command different functions like getting directions or controlling your music in the left cuff of the jacket. Pretty sweet. Also Project Aura, Google's modular phone is still alive and well with a target date of 2017 to consumers that gives them the user upgradable handset we've heard about since 2015. The team found people didn't want to change core components like the processor, so instead you'll be able to customize it with modules like an additional speaker, a camera, an e-ink display, and an expanded memory module. It'll be up to third parties to come up with even more unique add-ons, and it's a bold phone, so we'll wait and see how consumers react to it once it hits the market. And finally, Project Soli might have shown the biggest potential for the future of wearables and other devices. It was showcased last year, and it's a sensing technology that uses miniature radar to detect touchless gesture interactions. Smartwatch screens are really too small to do much with them, but with Soli, your hand can act as a virtual dial, a slider, or a button. Google ATAP showcased a little bit of what it can do with a Soli chip integrated into an LG watch. Hand closer to the watch, and now I can use a virtual dial gesture to interact with the complication. <laughs> yeah, that's bonkers. Now, dev kits for the Soli platform are in developers' hands, and Google already has planned to work with LG moving forward. And really, this is the coolest thing we saw at Google I.O. Now, Google's two-hour keynote featured a lot of things. We know about Google's Daydream. It's their VR headset that's just a rendering right now with no list of supported devices and a promo video with a later this year target. We know what to expect from Android N thanks to the developer previews. And I'm not switching messaging or video conferencing apps anytime soon, so Allo and Duo didn't do anything for me. But Google Home was my favorite directly taking on the Amazon Echo with its unique design and color options. But if you really want to take this to the next level, go with like a variety of scents like Hawaiian Breeze or Clean Linens. You've already got the air freshener design really nailed down. Now, Google's voice technology can make this special, but they don't actually have a product out. There's no price, and we've only heard later this year. Home has the potential to be better than the Echo, but the Echo has already built a strong family of third-party partners, and it's only getting bigger. Plus, the saddest part of this is the family that talks to home more than they talk to each other. Hey, Google, has my package shipped? Yes, it's already shipped. Okay, Google, how many stars are in our galaxy? Well, there are about 100 to 400 billion stars, according to space.com. All right, outside of I.O., Google's password-killing project Abacus will start testing in banks this summer. It was announced last year, and the idea is that humans are bad at remembering their passwords, which is true, but they are good at being themselves. Abacus analyzes how you type, how you speak, and combines that with other signals from the sensors in your phone. It basically is constantly paying attention to who you are. That doesn't sound like it could go wrong at all. It then calculates that you are who you say you are, creating a trust score. A new trust score API is what Google wants to put in developers' hands. Now, it's up to this test trial and developers to see if it's reliable and secure enough to replace PIN codes, passwords, and fingerprint logins. And finally, Google has patented a new sticky technology to protect pedestrians in case they get struck by one of Google's self-driving cars. The granted patent is for a sticky adhesive layer on the front side of the car that would adhere to a pedestrian instantaneously and help prevent them from being flung into other vehicles or other debris. Yes, you would physically stick to a Google car if you were hit by one. Now there's an eggshell-like layer covering the adhesive that would protect the sticky surface during everyday driving, but shatter in an accident to reveal the glue. The patent also could be applied to non-self-driving cars, but I really included this story because I like the drawings. All right, that's going to do it for this week. You can email us at googleicious at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time for some more of that Googleicious. Googleicious.